And how blessed if you, you're able to find someone who's gone far before you, or far ahead of you, uh, or who can inspire you uh, from a practical beat. And so I come before you, I have a presentation that I'll make that fit in uh, the mentorship and success. And one, I would want like to say that seek for mentorship. Try always possible to find a mentor. And how, I'll also throw a little light on that. Because you cannot dissociate success from mentorship. Never. And if it so happens, it will be such a hard goal success. But you can find a better way to get success through mentorship. And uh, by saying that, I'm trying to also uh, bring you to the fact that even if you don't get success, you cannot succeed. But there is a better way or an easier way to do it. Much as some people seek to go the hard way, there is always an easier way, which is authentic. And so mentorship is one of the authentic ways in which one can seek to find success. So, my topic to share with you today is uh, entitled Love Leadership. Love Leadership and the Power of a Signature. Love Leadership and the Power of a Signature. These are some of the insights that I'd like to share with you in the realm of mentorship uh, as uh, a stepping stone to success. And so, and I'm going back to myself, and probably to the to the message that we are viewing here. We saw one thing that uh, that uh, hit my mind is that we have companies that are that are worth multi billion dollars. Yes, and I would like to tell you that each of you here have capacity to begin and run a multi billion dollar company that if you don't know that believe it because these companies do not did not fall from heaven but one important point that we need to note is that having or running or the graphics they are showing us a multi-billion company simply a mark of achievement you know mtn itself is a multi company but the billion, whatever they are, if they are 100 billion, it's a mark of achievement. Now, process to get to that mark. And usually the problem lies in the process. We want to get these millions, we want to earn this amount of money, but we forget the process. The process, and if able to maintain that money, if today your company or your business became a multi-billion business, for how long will you run that multi-billion business? Will you sustain it for the next 10 years? Will your children's children find that? Now, each of you have got capacity to build a modern company in your own positions. And I'll tell you my story. When I New Vision in 2002, I will... I joined as a messenger. And as a messenger, one of the outstanding roles that I was doing was to serve tea to the reporters. The reporters are going to the field, they are tired, they are hungry. When they come, they want. And so my duty was to make sure he's ready. That's how I started. Now, now that is the process. It's a very long story to tell you. I've written a book on a smart, I think it's a smart career pursuit. I have another one coming talking about all the insights for, the, for today's sharing. But why am I sharing this? I'm not able to tell you the whole story, but cutting it out, cutting out the long story is that regular administration manager and security manager of the whole of Vision Group. How? How does that happen? From serving tea to that position. That's why I want to encourage each of you. I do not know where all of you lie in as far as love stands. 
regardless of the situation you're in, you have that hidden potential that can build a multi-billion company. It can change Uganda. It may not be Museveni. It might be you. But you simply need to believe in the fact that you can test each of us fairly. But it's dependent on how we fit within the processes of attaining need. Now, going to the point uh, today that I would like to share about, love leadership, starting with love leadership. When you talk about, I believe that each of you have got a, a, a common, you know, by intuition you think about a certain kind of love. I can even switch off thinking now when you talk about relationships. Your, 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 your fiancés and blah, blah. No. It is love simply purely as, you know, love leadership. What do you love? How do you expose love? That positive energy that you, you know, you expose uh, with your friend. That emotional love. Now, I want us to transfer that emotional love and put it, that emotional love for your fiancé and put it in the realm of establishing a lasting business. Now, love leadership is a of leadership that seeks to put, to put love at the forefront of every operational strategy or national idea that you conceive. Now, I would like to get two people who I would like them to, uh, who will help us demonstrate. One lady and one gentleman. To express love in business. We have seen multi-billion businesses here, but I'm that a multi-billion business is simply a mark of achievement, but there is a process to get. So I would like to have one gentleman and one lady. Or if that is difficult, you can have two ladies or two gentlemen. It doesn't matter who, who comes. You want to be very quick. Yes. Now, what's your name? Biar Hunger Slate. Hunger. Betty. Mirembe. Mirembe. Now, Biar Hunger and Betty are going to demonstrate love leadership. And so, do you have any business you do? Anything that you do? Do you have an idea that you'd like to sell to the out here? Do you have an idea that you'd like to sell to her? Hmm? Yeah. What do you do? I have some starting business. business. Which business is that? Uh, it's a general business in engineering. Okay. So, All right. So, going to tell her, you're going to share a proposal. You're going to find her in her office. She's an investor. <laughs> and so you're going to sell your idea. She has sent out proposals for people to come and probably see if she can spawn. And so you're going to stand here and you're going to have a small dialogue and you sharing business idea. And then she will consider whether to take it or not. And we have the minute to do that. Good morning, Madam Betty. Good morning. Uh, I'm happy to, to see you. Uh, I've, should I say I've heard about... Uh, it's you. I'm not in your business. Okay. <laughs> Just find this way to... You are the investor. I heard about your bid, uh, the bid that you established in new vision of Monday. And uh, I would like to be a partner to supply the PPE that you, that you may need. Uh, my company is Engineering Africa Uganda Limited, started in 2005, 2015. 
we do we sell PPE from uh, helmets, gloves, safety signs, and everything that engineers can have to uh, to make sure the projects get get to completion without problems in in such in safety. So why have you chosen me among all the other investors? Why are you coming to me? What are you looking up to? What expectations? Personally, uh, we are expecting we, we, we are expecting to grow our, our aim according to the statistics. In 2003, there was a, a death in Bulisa a person was crashing. Uh, we came back uh, in uh, Namanve. A person was also eaten by a machine trying to remove a, a wallet that had dropped in steel. But in normal uh, life, there are very many people dying every day just because they are not minding about their safety. So safety is an essential case. And then we are looking for an investor to support us in order to save the lives of the people who might die in this. Okay. Good idea. I'll get back to you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Now, we have uh, a very good example or a scenario in the marketplace because all these things that we say here or here, you had better pick something that you'll take for yourself in the market otherwise you're wasting time here. but thank you so much now i would like to tell you about love we all have ideas and it's our leaders that's why i called it love leadership. in my upcoming book entitled you are an authority we talk about i talk about the fact that each of us got authority now each of you is a leader each of you, 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 you each of you just know that you are a leader and you have an idea to sell. Now, in leadership, remember I say that it is a method of leadership that seeks to put love up front, ahead of every decision or every strategy that you seek to do. Now, our brother has a very good idea. He moves to sell it to an investor, which investor he has not researched about. Now, he simply, he did not even seek to explain what PPP is about. But the whole idea is he wants the money to run business. One, the investor did not even ask your background. He doesn't know that he has just broken the walls of Luzira and has simply put on a white shirt and has read the newspaper vision and has found an investor who is another pray <laughs> in other words love leadership is the kind of leader that seeks to establish a lasting relationship if you remember productions i labored to tell you that i am married i tell you that i have children i labored to tell you that i actually did not jump from heaven in but i started as a t-boy If you want to connect with me, it's up to you. But I did not start the way you see me. And now, that gives you, the two of you, if you are to connect very well, better know each other. The background of the person you're going to deal with. And this is on a daily. Even if it is, you're going to meet people here. Know them deeply. Establish the relationship. And that is love, leadership. It is the love leadership that establishes businesses or even establishes you at that job. I know not all of us will do business, but some of you are cut out for office. It's fine. In my book, The Smart Career Pursuit, I said 
for as long as you have made an assessment and established, looked around, identified all the available opportunities and known that I am for an office, please do it. Do it well. You'll have life there. But do not die in the office. You could have been a better businessman down in Chikubo. Now, love leadership is that is, is the means for you to establish a lasting relationship. And so there are a few other more principles that I'm going to relay about love leadership. I would also like to be uh, warned how many minutes I'm left with so that fit in the last uh, minutes uh, properly and do not delay your lunch. Yeah. So love leadership, just the way it has been demonstrated. The next principle I'd like us to, to share about love leadership is that vulnerability is power. Vulnerability is power. When I tell weak my weakness, to some people or to some leaders, they think that it will be demeaning for you to find out what my weaknesses are. And so I had better uh, portray a, a, a scathless lifestyle. I am a, a man. I'm a superman. I'm a superwoman. And so that will keep me afloat in the market or in wherever life takes me. That's not true. Vulnerability is power. People want to be reached at their point of, uh, at, at their level in life. So you stretch your hand and get to your neighbor, catch them at their level of, of you know, of, 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 of reasoning and understanding. But if I tell you that I am a super and meaning, so I will never get down to you and to address you, or never connect because you already see me about you. But when you share your story, your honest story, then you break the walls and you're able to and can now do business or you can now be listened, you can tend to each other. That's 10. So you can listen to each other properly. So vulnerability is power. Do not hide, sieve, sieve enough to give out, depending also on which circle you're in. But just to know that the upper limit is that vulnerability is power other than um, what is thought to be a weakness. Now, love makes money. Love makes money. We're looking for, mon for money. Every business, every company, name it. Not money because it is, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a, a critical aspect for the progression of this truth. Now, this love makes money. If, if he had dwell with this investor, if this investor had established he cannot let go of Biarahanga, is it? That would eventually generate money for him. But he had to have had the concept of love leadership to be able to love, to love, to share more of himself and establish a strong relationship with the partner and then eventually he will realize money so love makes money love money now there is also the principle of um, th this is an operation you know principle that beats the the principle of love ship and that is named uh, plotting to catch one doing good when when you put love at the forefront Instead of wanting to catch your neighbor or to catch your colleague doing the good, the, the bad thing, now you plot to catch them doing. It. Meaning, you will lead them, you will guide them, you will advise them on how they can be able to avoid direction and not to let them get there and fall it and then say, I have caught you. Now, the honest truth, as we go about the search for jobs, the search for, for even um, uh, excellence in our exams, you'll find that we tell so many lies, so many lies. And now the lies are out of the love leadership equation. This truth establishes 
establishes any relationship, be it business, be it a, just a friendly relationship, the honest truth, just as the Bible says for those who love, who read the Bible, that the truth will set you free. Now, learn to serve the honest truth. How many of you have got uh, loans from the bank? Or you're planning, okay? There is a hand. I have got a loan and I have experienced the fact that when you go to the bank, the sales executive is so happy to know when you are signing off. But they may not do so much to want to know what you're going to use that money for. It is all documented. It is not that deliberate extra effort to help out to tell you the truth that you cannot do this money or your business idea cannot work or you need to do this and that to be able to get this money but there is always an excitement and a quickness to get you to sign off the loan and uh, as i was reading in the in in in, in one of the books we got to know that uh, all such tendencies will get you the money. You'll get the money and you'll do nothing. But love leadership calls for sharing the honor. Even if it's going to hurt you, but when you share the honest truth and I'm unable to take your loan today, probably I'll come back the next day and take even much more when I'm ready to actually take it and have it benefit me. Now, that brings another aspect of love leadership, which is uh, uh, called the abundance mentality. When you share the honest truth, then you establish an abundant mentality. You are able to share out your knowledge the way it is for the benefit of your neighbor. And so, even when there are resources, you are able to share them abundantly. But that establishes a long and lasting relationship for your business for your friendship name it serving the honest truth opens an abundance that you would not have probably if you have held on to something or told a lie i come and get a loan anything with it and the next day i am the one preaching about never take a loan loans actually work loans work if you have got a good strategy, good advice, and you have been served the honest truth to work for you. And then we have uh, the good attitude. To operate within the love leadership principle, you'll always be called out to or expose the a good attitude. A good attitude is ability to remain positive and uh, to remain positive in situations that are against your interests. You are here in Kampala, your family is here and they deploy you in Karamoja. <laughs> and so you have to commute once a month come and work and, and visit your... That's when you test the good attitude. It's not being always ready to be sent to go to uh, stand chart, to go to, you know, today you're flying out to you to South Africa. No, 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 no. The good attitude is tested at that point when you, the least of your interests, but you can be able to give it a go ahead because of the of love leadership that has been established in you. You expose that love and be able to move on and you bear fruit. But it also separates you from the I don't know how, what levels of studies we've gone through. It's only a good attitude that will separate you from the crowd. Not the first degree is not this and that. The character that we seek to build within the principle of love leadership is a great, uh, is a critical factor in as how, in as far, uh, in how far you will go and to maintain your, uh, your, your career journey. Now, the opposite of love leadership is fear-led leadership. I'll go into details here. And so, fear-led leadership always tells you that there is, the resources are not enough. It carries along it this custom mentality. 
So you will never share with your friends. You will want to hold everything that you have because you feel it's not enough for you. And so whenever an idea is shared to you, it does not work even before you think about it. It cannot work. <laughs> it can't work. Please just give it a thought. It can't work. Huh? Abusive language. We need one another. Remember we told you. So if you are such an abusive, you are outside the love leadership uh, call. You know, if you have these caps to sell and know a team, so you want to know that it is only you who can do it. And so the team that you're leading, no one will know that they do anything. Stealing credit is fear-led leadership. You are that you may actually lose your job, and so you'll do anything to suppress the others and steal credit at all times. Now, in my last minutes, I want to touch the power of the signature. The power of the signature also comes in the realm of leadership because we want to, isn't that why we're here? We want to have a better side of life. The power of a signature. Who of us here has a signature? Have a signature. I believe we all have a signature. How did you get to learn about a signature? Someone tell me how you got to, someone else, me how you got to figure out that this is actually a signature and it's important. Now remember, please come and share, just in a second. It's important. And the signature I'm talking about, you may also still be confused. It is this signature that you use on your, or on your, that form or your contract or something your name and how just a minute hi everyone my name is Michelle harriet butcher and hunt about the signature is when i was going to sit for my primary class uh, ple we were told that we have to come up with initials that show your name and that you're going to be stuck with it forever and that it will be on my bank and everything and everything. So it's way back then. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. You are very blessed to have had that explanation. Now, in my case, for some reason, we all started scribbling and saying, can have a signature. Let me, let me see your signature. Then I would put the one down. Then the other would say, okay, the blackboard. Then eventually, we started to say it is a signature, but we never had any explanation that you will need a signature for this and this reason. Now, the explanation was given, thank God, but no one goes deeper to tell you the power that is within the significance of that signature, apart from it getting you money or allowing you entry into a certain owned area, and no one goes to give it its rightful position. Now, I want to mean that, that that signature, that artistic impression, it sums up your whole authority. When I sign off this check and give it to Brian or give him, wherever it goes, <laughs> they don't need to see me. As long as my signature is in their database and it is the one person, they are as good as seen. Frank is there when not there. Now, that is the power of the signature. Because of power and authority that it welds, it can destroy your family. It can get into joy. You can jail yourself just by the power of your signature. And so if you want to be successful, if you think you'll run that multi-billion company for the next generations, master to your signature and do not let anybody else po cause you to sign off if not verified. Read, understand. Even if it means causing a delay of action somewhere, it's better delayed but signed off rightly. 
many have fallen on the account of the signature. I, I saw there's a minister who, if you read the newspapers, there's a minister who said that the contents of the documents are not his, but that is his. Why? It's because it has backfired. <laughs> so there will always be moments of backfiring. Many people have stories. There is a football star who began to play very well and was called out to sign a contract. This is a life story. He was very happy. Whenever, a co whenever anyone is upon to sign a contract, excitement takes the stage. And you sign off. So he signed off and started playing. His talent improved. Another football star cited him. Now, he was quick to accept. Now, only to be shocked that the contract ended in excitement previously with contract. I wish. <laughs> it was a life court, and so he had to play in that club until he was squeezed out the whole juice and he was left. Now, many of us may not be boosters, but you might be an employer, you might be a business person, you might have a pin somewhere, because these are the intricacies of success that you meet. Sign until you have read. Do not sign if you're drunk, for those of you who... Do not sign if you're sleepy. There is a lady who signed off their matrimonial home because the husband came and woke her up from bed early in the morning said, please, this deal is passing by. It was a story in the New Vision. Why was he sending off the deal? He was buying about, there were about three Audi cars from South Africa. And the lady signed off their nice home over 700 million house. She was, he just cleaned her face and signed. So you have worked. <laughs> no one can say that so and so is poor. No, you have worked, but your signature has poured out the whole suit. Now, the power of the signature is in your hands. You have the power to hold it back until you get it right. You have started, you've done all this, you've attended all these seminars, you've acquired this, your success, and then you drop it in one day on the account of your signature? Really? It's not worth it. Love leadership and the power of the signature will establish you for a lasting and last uh, uh, career journey that is fruitful and enjoyable because it's also one thing to be successful but another to enjoy the success. <laughs> so, when we seek to be successful, let us also think about the enjoyment because it makes not for you to be successful and then go restless for the rest of your life because you signed off somewhere a wrong contract. Guys are gone. I would like to thank you so much for the time. Thank you to the M. And thank you all for making that to come because I know some do not treasure this moment. But they're very important. And so pick out just one thing. Even if you just take out the fact that your signature is yours, no one can put you on gunpoint to sign. And if they did, it's on. Keep it. And just neighbor, practice lovely, and you'll have an enjoyable journey. God bless you. Wow. Well. Wonderful. Thank you, Frank. Another hand clap, Frank. You know, it's very interesting that I concluded by saying, pick one thing, and even if it's about the signature, go with that. I must admit, when we were growing up, my signature came to be because we had a petition on who had the most complicated signature. The longest done with which could not be replicated. And until I got into... Uh, a different position was when I actually discovered it's not how long it is or how complicated it is, but it is your representation. It's a representation of you. Thank you very much, Frank.
hand clap for Frank. Um, you know, sometimes we have such events and it's all about the, the speakers. However, we would like to hear from you, the audience. Would like to hear any questions? Frank is. Would like to hear some additions or something that you believe the rest of the people here should, could learn from you. Any takers? Betty, would you like to open? Okay, thank you, Brian. Frank, that was very, very enriching. Okay, now, question is, when you think about yourself, when you think about what uh, Frank has told us about uh, uh, love leadership, and you think about yourself, the question is, what kind of signature you have? What kind of signature are you taking? Okay. Can anybody think about, can anybody like to share? to share that, is share on what kind of signature they would take, what kind of signature they would have. Okay. Personally, the kind of signature I would love to take is the one that shows love the people. People are my passion. When I put that signature on that paper, honest, honest me. And I mean what I'm saying when I put that signature on that paper. I love, love love people. Everything centers on love. Okay? When you love people, then you'll be successful. Signature is success. Thank you. Any any question? Anybody would like to share their signature or anything else that uh, Frank has shared with you? Any comments you'd like to make? Thank you, Harriet. Yes, sure, please. You can speak from there. Okay, um, thank you for the opportunity. From what Frank shared, um, I remember as he was beginning about everyone of us having potential. And for me, that is a take home, and probably to encourage um, some of or all of us here that each one of us has potential because. I believe that everyone of us has something they are good at. And okay, sometimes it might take someone else pointing it out to you. But I know that each one of us has a passion. And if you work at that passion, I do believe that, uh, like Frank said, can take you places. And um, from, okay. From the podcast that watching, much as it did not go far, I saw something put my eye from Kodak being up there with so many employees and then the trends changing to Instagram, only 13 employees and yet it's a my billion company. It speaks a lot to me and it says to me, it's not about the amount or the quantity, but it's about how well you articulate or how well you do whatever it is that you do. So to all of us, whatever it is that you got, your passion or whatever it is, the gift that you have, if you work hard at it, it can actually take you places. Thank you. Thank you so much, Harriet, for sharing. I've been sitting for quite some time. Oh, sorry. There's a... You'd like to share with us? Oh, Brian. Thank you, Sir Mr. Frank. Again, I'm Slade. Uh, you have to always uh, begin with background, trying to talk a lot about ourselves and our vulnerability. But most of the people we find in office are always not ready for very long conversations. They want you to come directly to the point. 
they always feeling, I think, they have less time. I want you to clarify, how can we balance the whole thing to make it a little bit shorter and uh, precise? Thank you. Thank you. Now, the, that's, that's a, a real challenge. A real challenge. Other, the other thing where I invest my time that I did not share is promoting reading and writing. And in the course of, I found that people do not like to read long text. <laughs> they want it to brief. But now, if you're going to, to be one the African youth who is going to find out or discover the next tech camera, you're not going to read one paragraph. You will touch. You're going to you're going to, to write papers in volumes. And then you'll be able to innovate. Now, that is a fact. But you can change. If I tell you that, if I come to your office, you by the way, this is my business card. I'm the administration manager of Vision. And I'm doing this and that. <coughs> Sorry. This guy might be oh, <laughs> now, who are you that you are an adult manager? But if I start by, t by bringing out the human me, the story is likely to change. Just give it a shot. Just one word will touch someone here more from you. Recently, this is a live example. I was walking around New and someone who had come to see the person, it's a young boy at university, Someone called to help him. But this person was not helpful enough, so he just dumped him. This guy told me, he called me out. I was walking, very busy, and said, I need help. <laughs> now that statement of I need help is already a stability. Now there, even if it was a meeting, I would want to listen what kind of help. She needed, he needed 400000 to be able to go and pay for her last, his last paper, which he was receipting. If he missed it, then he would be off the list completely. Now, I told him, I don't have this 4000 but I can connect you somewhere where you can work, and probably in a, a short time, that money. Did I need to know <laughs> what company he's doing, what strategies? No. It was just because the first statement, ability, picked my attention, and I dropped whatever I had. And so, just keep it going, because you know it works. But even if it doesn't, at times you need to be the initiator of change. You many walls and knock off and knock off, but at times it might be you to cause the change to think about things differently. I want to know that we are very important people. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Frank. Okay. Any others? Yeah. Brian? There is a question online. Sorry, allow me to stay seated. I'm holding so many gadgets here. We are streaming on uh, on the MTN Uganda page, and there is someone who has been following, and they have a question for you, Frank. Uh, the one is called Christopher. He's saying, so what should consider when choosing a mentor because you talked about mentorship i think at the start okay when choosing a mentor uh this mentor should be someone who has who who, who is somewhere for starters so is more experienced and first of all you also need to be sure of where you're headed have you thought about your purpose? Because mentorship is one who can actually lead you to you that final goal. You don't want to keep beating about the bush. If it happens, circumstances, yes, to get somewhere. But if you're going to look for Frank as a mentor, for example, I've told you an author. I'm a public speaker. I'm a broadcaster. I'm a profession. 
Now, therein, you should pick out one item that you think I can in. But I should also have some experience in it. So they are also the better. At times we want to, to remain in the confines of our youth people, friends who we relate with, who understand our slang. Please get better. Someone who is more experienced, area of interest. Someone who has got an, a good track record. Please don't go to the and say you want to become an accountant. <laughs> Find someone, put your thought to it. Someone experienced, someone a little older, has a good track record, and then seek out for mentorship, and you'll follow you. Okay, thank you so much, Frank. Okay, any other question? Okay, I would like, um, just so uh, we remember, pick your mentors correctly pick your mentor pick the right person who where you want to go okay i would like this take opportunity to thank frank so much for what you've shared may you be blessed more and more thank you so much for mentoring our youth and i do believe that we've picked up some good positive vibes that we can go with from there remember get someone to help you someone to guide you. we all need someone to hold our hand thank you uh, right now, we would go for lunch, okay? We'll have a, our lunch, then we'll come back here at exactly... We'll go with 10 minutes to 2 p.m. Okay, yeah. 10 minutes to p.m., we'll be back here. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Uh, this afternoon, just to um, give you a brief agenda, we'll have uh, uh, one of our own formerly our own we would like to own him us <laughs> yeah and uh, he will be coming here to uh, give us some insights we have uh, other speakers that are both here and coming along but also we will have a panel discussion and the discussion will focus around ICT and how can support youth empowerment in Uganda so do enjoy your lunch and uh, i ask that we're here on time 10 to 2 so that we can kick off and all these people who are very powerful insights and can change our lives thank you very much <laughs>